Hi there, and welcome to another short web snippet brought to you by the guys here at Innova Systems. My name is Matthew, and this time I'm going to have a quick chat to you about how we can use advanced fixtures to our advantage within SolidWorks simulation. So let's have a look at the model. Okay, what we've got here is quite a simple uh, model of a fire hydrant. And what I'm going to do is simulate the presence of the bolts that you see around the bottom here on this base flange. And we're going to simulate the fire hydrant being bolted to the ground and a forward pressure acting on one of the faces of one of these side tubes. So first of all, let's switch over to our FEA configuration. And what I've got here is an assembly with the bolts included. So this is going to be our base reference study. So we're going to be comparing our simplified simulations to the fully resolved bolts in this situation. So this has got to be our most accurate representation of those bolts in there. So I've run, already set up and run this study. You'll see I've got no penetration contacts between all of the bolts and the fire hydrant. And here you'll see where our force is being applied. So I've just got 200 newtons being applied normal to that face there. Okay, so let's have a look at our stress results. First thing I want you to notice is that I have set the maximum value on our chart to 650,000 pascals. And this is going to be the same throughout. So we're going to have this scale as our constant throughout the study. So this will make it really easy to compare our results. I'm just going to isolate this main body. And what we'll see is the stresses around these bolt hole locations. And this is going to be important because this is how our studies are probably going to vary the most because we're changing our configurations based on the presence of these bolts. So let's have a look down here. We can see we've got some peak stress values on the inside of these front three bolt holes. And we've also got a peak stress around this fillet on the base here. We've also got a small increase around the other side as well. Okay, what I'm gonna do actually is just take a snapshot of that. So let's have it about there. And we'll bring that up to the top corner so we can just compare that later on. Okay, so now let's go in and have a look at simplifying our study. Because actually, first of all, you'll see that this study took 11 minutes to solve. Now, I know that's not particularly long, but you can appreciate that as our model gets larger and larger, this solve can start to take longer and longer. Okay, so now let's have a look at the fire hydrant model. And what you'll see here is I've got a number of studies set up. So the first one is going to be a situation which I see quite a lot here in technical support. I see a lot of people when they're setting up their studies, when they've got things that are fixed with bolts, it's quite common to put a fixture on the bolt holes. And there's nothing particularly wrong with that, as long as you can appreciate the assumptions that you're making. So let's have a look here at the results. You'll notice we've still got the same maximum value on our chart. But as we come round to the other side, we can see that the peak stress values have gone round on all of those bolt holes. We've also got quite a large peak stress region on the back side of the fire hydrant. So we can see how our value is already quite different. Let's now have a look at another one that I'm quite used to seeing here, and that's fixed base. So if I bring the stress result up for this guy, this is a situation where we've simply taken the fixed geometry fixture and placed it square on the bottom of the fire hydrant. So the entire bottom face is fixed. And so you can see we haven't got any stress values around those bolt holes there. And that's because none of it is allowed to move. So none of the strains are allowed to develop and hence none of the stresses are allowed to develop. So we're losing a lot of accuracy there. You can also see that as a result of that, uh, our stress bands around the front and back have been minimized to very little. Okay, so now let's look at how we can start using these advanced fixtures to uh, simplify the situation, but still give us that accuracy. So let's have a look at my advanced fixture study. And what you'll see here is I've used the on cylindrical faces fixture. So that's underneath the fixtures tab. Uh, we use the advanced fixtures box and select the on cylindrical faces button. And then I've just been round and selected all of the internal faces of all of these bolt holes and then we get a number of options for controlling the fixture on that face. So here you can see we've got the radial fixture uh, active. We've also got the option of activating the circumferential fixture and also an axial fixture. So when we activate each of these, we can specify an amount 
by which we are displacing. If we leave that at zero, that means that that, that face is fixed at that exact location. So here, essentially what we've done is told the system that these bolt holes can't move anywhere in the radial direction with respect to each of their own axes. And so that replicates the presence of that bolt shaft, not allowing that bolt hole to move. Okay, next we've got um, further reference geometry. So you'll see here what I've done is I've created a split face on the top face uh, around each of the holes. And this is to simulate the presence of the head of the bolt. And so what I've done here, as we come back in, is select each of those faces as we did previously, but instead this time I've used the reference geometry button as opposed to on cylindrical faces. And then what that allows us to do is select the top plane and specify that I don't want any translations in the Z direction or in the normal direction. So these faces aren't allowed to move up and down, simulating the presence of that bolt head, not allowing those faces to shift upwards. What that means is that elsewhere, we're still allowed to see that deformation in the up-down direction, which is much, much more realistic. Finally, I've brought in what's called a virtual wall. And this is very easy to set up. If I right-click on the Connections button here and go to Contact Set, you'll see under the Type, we've got the option to select Virtual Wall. And all I need to do here is select a plane. So I've already created a plane here. You'll see it's called Ground on the bottom face of our geometry. So if I select that for this set box, and then I select the bottom face, what we're essentially doing is telling the system that there is something where that plane is that isn't going to allow our geometry to move beyond it. It's essentially in the name, we're not allowing it to move past that virtual wall. We also have the opportunity to specify whether that wall type is rigid or flexible. So we can specify it being flexible and give it some elastic properties. So we've got an axial and a tangential stiffness value just here. Okay, then we've got the same force, exactly the same mesh settings. I've used exactly the same mesh settings for all of these studies, just to give us that continuity. And so let's have a look at the stress here. Now you'll see as I turn the symbols off so we can have a good look at the bolt holes, we've got much, much more realistic uh, representation of those bolts. And that's very, very similar, in fact, to our most realistic study, which is fixing those bolts and actually modeling those bolts in the model. What you'll also notice now, if I come into the uh, solver messages, you'll see that this study has taken a lot, lot less time to solve. And as our model, again, begins to grow further and further, these two solve times, so the one for our full resolved geometry with the bolts in, and our simplified study with the advanced fixtures will start to diverge quite significantly. So you'll see how much time we start to save here. One final study I'm going to show you is a simplification that we can use because you'll see that we've got an axis of symmetry within our study through the plane that you'll see indicated with my cursor now, which is represented by the right plane. We can split our study in half and tell the system that there is a symmetry on that split line. So let's have a look at that. So first of all, I need to generate that cut. So I've got another configuration here called symmetry. And that is a simple cut straight down the middle of our study. And I'm gonna come into my symmetry study. And what you'll see here is I've got exactly the same fixtures as we had in our advanced fixtures study. But I've also got this symmetry fixture. So let's have a look in there and you'll see how simple this fixture is. It's simply a case of selecting the symmetry icon and selecting each of those faces that has been cut by our symmetry plane. So notice we're not selecting the internal faces of those bolts because we haven't cut that face with our symmetry cut. And it's as simple as that. So what the system's now going to do is assume that we've got a mirror image of the system on the other side of that symmetry plane. And one thing that you will have to bear in mind is that because we've only got half of our face represented in the actual study, we need to cut our force in half. So we've got 100 newtons here as opposed to 200 newtons. Now when we run this, what you'll notice is we come out with exactly the same results as we had in the previous study, but obviously in half. So we just need to bear in mind that it is reflected identically on the other side. And you can imagine how much time that saved us because we've only had to solve half of the entire model. Okay, that's a quick lowdown on using the advanced fixtures.
As always, if you wanted to get in touch with us, you can do so by calling in at our website, which is www.innova-systems.co.uk. You can drop us an email at support at innova-systems.co.uk, or you can give us a call on the number you see on your screen now.